Thank you. Therefore, it's now time for member statements. The member from Simcoe Gray. Speaker, I rise today to talk about the WPD Canada wind turbine project that was approved just a few days ago by the Liberals for my riding of Simcoe Gray. These turbines are a safety hazard for pilots and passengers using the Collingwood Regional Airport. They are located right next door. The eight wind turbines are 500 feet in height. That's almost as high as the TD office tower here in downtown Toronto. And at 2.1 nautical miles from the airport, they are a threat to pilots taking off and landing. A plane taking off will reach the first two turbines in a matter of seconds. The Environment Minister says that NAV Canada didn't have any concerns about these turbines, but the pilots using the Collingwood Airport certainly do. These are pilots who have flown all over the world, all types of aircrafts. They don't take the matter lightly, and neither should the Liberals. The local airport board and local municipalities don't want these wind turbines. They aren't wanted for safety reasons, and they aren't wanted because they will negatively impact the economy. This includes future investment at the airport and neighbouring lands. Mr. Speaker, I don't understand why the government is putting the lives of people at risk. These turbines are a bad idea. I'm calling on the government once again to do the right thing and put a stop to this lunacy today before someone is killed. It's not a matter of if that will happen, Mr. Speaker. It's a matter of when. Thank you. Speaker, I rise today to speak about something that is very important to me and to the thousands of people in my hometown. Today, like many members, I attended the OGRA Roma conference with a delegation from London, including our mayor and two city councillors. They spoke to me about how the City of London is en entering a new chapter in our history, one that is focused on improving mobility options for residents. For those of you that don't know, London, Ontario is the largest city in Canada without a rapid transit system. A hallmark initiative of the city's London plan is the SHIFT Rapid Transit Plan. Londoners of all stripes agree that transportation mobility is a pillar of the future success of our city. The SHIFT initiative is about finding environmentally sustainable ways to move people in London faster and create greater, a great place to live and work. It focuses on rapid transit as part as long, along with cars, buses, bikes, and pedestrians of the transportation system that will help our city grow and, par and prosper. And it's about developing the foundations to make London attractive for investment. Our mayor appeared before the Legislat Leg Legislative Finance Committee to share the transit use in London has nearly doubled since 1998 and continues to grow. London is ready to put its money on the table and voted unanimously to support this important development. To the Minister of Transportation, the City of London needs a provincial funding partner, and we are asking if we can count on this government to support this vital transit program in the coming budget. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Barrie. Thank you, Speaker. On February 11th, the Royal Victoria Health Centre in my riding in Barrie opened its doors to welcome families and visitors 24-7 as a part of its new family presence policy. This change from traditional visiting hours to open visitation is an important step forward in patient and family-centered care at the health centre. At RVH, family is considered part of the care team because, as President and CEO Janice Scott says, no one knows our patients better than their own loved ones. Janice went on to say, making the transition to open visiting hours is the right thing to do for our patients. Every patient has the right to expect the best possible experience while at RVH. Research shows that in addition to a positive patient experience, the presence and involvement of loved ones contributes to better care, fewer medication errors and falls, lower rates for readmission, and a decrease in emergent department visits following discharge. RVH first decided to develop a family presence policy based on the input it received from its patient family advisory council. Former MP Ed Harper had his first-hand experience with this policy. Ed's wife, Rosemary, was in the RVH for the last two months of her life, and Ed rarely left her side. Ed did what he could to help the care team, and they were great in allowing him to stay with Rosemary. It meant so much to both of them. He knew that other patients and families could benefit from the same support. Mr. Speaker, I'm very proud to represent amazing people like these leaders from Barrie who are putting patients first. Thank, Thank you. you. Further member statements? The member from Nepean and Carlton. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. This week, we will take time in this assembly to support anti-bullying measures. 
Like many of my colleagues, tomorrow I will wear my pink in support. But today I ask all members of this esteemed assembly to give thoughts and good wishes to one of Ontario's most passionate anti-bullying activists, Stuntman Stu Swartz. Over the years, I have worked with a Stuntman Stu on a number of initiatives in Ottawa. He's effectively the most well-known Ottawa booster. He is the trainer of his son's hockey team. Stu is also a workaholic. He is a, a relentless community champion who attends charity functions by the dozen each week. He uses his good name and his celebrity to boost food banks, our local hospitals, and his No More Bullies campaign. He's a fighter, and he's taken up the cause of Collins Army, supporting a 12-year-old uh, Colin Gillespie in his fight against cancer, which is why it is so cruel that Connie's husband and Matteo and Isabella's dad was diagnosed this past week with leukemia. Stu has been incredible throughout this entire ordeal, documenting his chemotherapy, his newly shaved face, and all of the visitors that he has been receiving at the Ottawa Hospital. He has so many fans at Magic 100 and as the official voice of the Ottawa Senators as our PA announcer. We are all with him in that journey. Everyone in Ottawa wants to help Stu because Stu helps everyone in Ottawa. And right now he needs our support as he stands up against one of the biggest bullies of all, cancer. So on behalf of all of his friends, fans, and neighbours in Nepean and Carleton and throughout the rest of Ottawa, I want him to know that we are all part of hashtag Stu Strong and he will beat this bully with us by his side. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. Today I rise on behalf of my community of Windsor West. This month, people living in Windsor and Essex County welcome the announcement of 1,200 new hires at our Fiat Chrysler assembly plant, along with an additional 100 apprenticeships indentured by Chrysler Canada. I am proud to say that 10 per cent of these apprenticeships are positions held by women. This is encouraging news for the current and future production workers and skilled tradespeople, their families, as well as the greater community, noting the spin-off jobs at the feeder plants. It's not surprising that Fiat Chrysler would see the value of investing in Windsor with the high productivity, world-class safety standards, highly skilled workforce, and dedication of the unionized production workers and skilled trades workforce at the Windsor Auto Plant. What is disappointing, Speaker, is that the Premier and her Minister of Economic Development, Employment and Infrastructure were quick to take the credit rather than recognize the key role those employees played in securing a new investment, which resulted in the recent hiring announcement of 1,200 jobs. While this government applauds itself for a job well done, their freeze on hospital funding resulting in the elimination of 169 registered nursing positions at Windsor Regional Hospital, removing care for families in their most vulnerable moments. This is what the Liberal government should take responsibility for, but not surprisingly, they continue to deny cuts to frontline health care in Windsor and across Ontario. Ontario families want a government that understands their priorities and Thank gives you. credit where credit is due, rather than one set on playing politics. Thank you. Member Statements, the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore. Baker. On Saturday, February 20th, Yvonne Baker of Etobicoke Centre and I co-hosted the 11th annual Etobicoke Government and Community Services Fair at Cloverdale Mall. This annual event offers constituents of both ridings and those visiting from outside as well an opportunity to learn more about the many services offered by the province of, on of Ontario and also by various non-profit and for-profit agencies and community organizations that service Etobicoke Lakeshore and Etobicoke Centre. This year, we attracted over 3,000 visitors to the fair. More than 120 exhibitors from government ministries and institutions, local agencies and community organizations set up at the mall to showcase what they do, connect with residents, the resources that they need, and generally make us more aware of the initiatives and local activities in our community. For me, it's a valuable time to meet with constituents, listen to their concerns, and be able to refer them directly to the services that they need. 
There's also fun and entertainment from trying out the lawn bowling greens and taking in the sounds of the Etobicoke Philharmonic Orchestra and the Etobicoke Community Concert Band. And I'd like to th take this opportunity to thank all of the organizations and volunteers that worked hard on Saturday to get this information out to our community. We're already looking forward to the 2017 Government Community Services Fair at Cloverdale Mall and welcome all my fellow MPPs who might wish to join us. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Halliburton, Court Lakes, Brock. Mr. Speaker, a few weeks ago I was invited to attend Peterborough County Council to hear some of their concerns. They made it absolutely clear that life is becoming increasingly unaffordable for families in rural communities like those in Peterborough County. Ron Giroux, Mayor of Havelock, Belmont, Methuen Township, said that the province is overlooking the needs of rural Ontario and that the Premier has lost her focus when it comes to rural Ontario. They deserve to be heard about how rising hydro rates are putting people into poverty, forcing businesses to downsize or close. The rising cost of policing on, our, on their small municipal budgets and the lack of action in building new long-term care beds to accommodate their growing senior population. Mayor Giroux stated the wait list for the Peterborough area for long-term care has jumped from 950 people five years ago to 2,700 people today. Shame. Mayor Giroux's township has a, a, a spot for a new long-term care facility to be built. He's asked the Premier to come by and see this spot. He's asked the Minister responsible for long-term care to address this horrendous wait list. There is no action. He is passionate. This is horrendous and needs to be dealt with. And if this government does not deal with this, I hope that the Minister of Peter, from Peterborough is actually goes to the Premier and demands this action now. Thank you. Thank you. ...today and speak about the recent groundbreaking on the new Oakville Aaron Oak Kids Centre for Treatment and Development. I had the pleasure of joining several of my colleagues recently to help announce this milestone redevelopment project. Aaron Oak Kids offers a wide variety of crucial services for children and youth with a range of disabilities and special needs. From medical care to speech and autism therapy, Aaron Oak Kids will be able to provide our communities with the services and opportunities kids and their families need. I know that in my riding of Halton, many families rely on Aaron Oak Kids, and this redevelopment will go a long way toward improving access and delivery of services. In fact, Mr. Speaker, perhaps the best part of this announcement was hearing the kids themselves talk about the important and real impact this facility will have on their lives. It was moving to hear their personal stories. Once completed, Aaron Oak Kids will have new facilities not only in Oakville, but also in Mississauga and Brampton. It's the right thing to do. This will allow them to provide better coordinated care for as many as 5,600 children and youth in my area. In fact, this project will more than double the amount of treatment and therapy space. Mr. Speaker, I'm proud to say our government is providing 100 per cent of the funds needed to purchase the land and build all three facilities. I'd like to congratulate the leadership of Aaron Oak Kids for their hard work on this project and for their dedication to the families they serve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Ottawa South. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Hier, la Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday, the Premier of Ontario asked excuses to all Francophones, of which families and communities suffered following Regulation 17. It's a dark, it was a dark period in the history of our province when uh, Regulation 17 was in place. In 1912, Regulation 17 uh, forbid French language teaching uh, or even that people spoke in French in primary school after second year. And it, uh, French could only be used for one hour during the day in primary schools. Many teachers resisted and continue to teach in French uh, despite the penalties for, uh, for the fact that they were not following Regulation 17. The Franco-Ontarian community is very proud of its history, and this is something that must be celebrated. 
I would like to thank the member from Sudbury who tabled the resolution, as well as the Francophone Affairs Minister in and the work that she does protecting the Francophone culture in Ontario. I would like to thank Denis Constantino who raised this injustice many years ago that was done to Franco Ontario. Thank you. Thank all members for their statements. It's now time for